after I return home from a long bike ride, I'm often asked, how far did you go? And yes, distance is the foremost metric of a cyclist's long distance cycling achievement. However, for a sport which often involves hilly or mountainous terrain, I feel like I'd, I'd like to boast of the elevation gained during a ride as an important indicator of my accomplishment. I decided to devise a simple metric which accounted for distance traveled and elevation gained and lost. You know, one could assess the overall effort of a ride by the kilojoules that are burnt, but that's a bit abstract. So I've defined the flat equivalency distance, which is the distance on flat road, which would require the equivalent total amount of work given typical riding conditions. For example, if I typically had to use 1000 kilojoules to ride 50 kilometers with 700 meters of climbing, then the flat equivalency distance is the distance on flat road with my typical solo endurance riding, which would also use 1,000 kilojoules. And this would be around 85 kilometers. I extracted data from some of my long rides, ranging between 100 and 330 kilometers. And I broke all of those rides into 10 minute intervals, so that there was a good combination of different elevation gains and losses in each interval. Using statistical regression analysis, I then determined the relationship between work exerted in every interval with the distance traveled and elevation gained and lost in that interval. The result was that I had derived a predictive equation to 97% accuracy for the kilojoules of work I would exert for a ride given a profile of distance traveled and elevation gained and lost. On an average endurance ride, every 20 meters in extra elevation I climb requires the same amount of work as it takes to ride one kilometer on flat road. However, we need to make some adjustments for descending because they're obviously easier miles. Every 70 meters descending negates one kilometer in distance traveled. I now have a single indicator to simply describe the accomplishment of a ride. I should emphasize that this formulation is for me, given my typical endurance riding. If I was riding at my maximal efforts over shorter durations or drafting in a group or had a major change in my bike or in my position on the bike, and if there were very different conditions such as strong winds over a route, then this calculation would lose its precision. Also, the calculations for the flat equivalency distance would differ for different cyclists. However, I wanted to look at the robustness of this, so I looked at data from one of my good friends, Simon. He sent me the data from some of his rides and I put it into my formulation and found that I was 95% accurate. To further explore the robustness of this metric, I extracted data from a random sample of 600 cyclists who have made their rides publicly available on Strava and found that with such a variation in riding styles and abilities, the accuracy of the predicted formula was certainly more variable, but the average across all random rides was reasonably close. So I'm confident in using the flat equivalency distance as a new metric for comparing endurance rides, at least for myself. This leads me to think about what the flat equivalency distance was for some of my long endurance rides. Some of those rides I've considered as epic. So I also devised a new metric to capture one's lifetime cycling achievements. It's a derivative of the Eddington number. Arthur Eddington was a prominent astrophysicist about 100 years ago. He was also a keen cyclist and he's credited with devising a metric for a cyclist's long distance riding achievements, the Eddington number. And it's defined as the maximum number E, such that the cyclist has cycled E miles on E days. So Eddington's lifetime Eddington number was an impressive 84. And that means he completed 84 rides that were at least 84 miles in distance. To account not just for distance, but for climbing feats, I propose the flat equivalency distance index or fed index to be calculated similarly. The maximum number X such that the cyclist has completed X rides with a flat equivalency distance of at least X kilometers. My fed index for rides during the last three years comes to 95. Hopefully I can crack 100 before too long.